The fourth generation Chevrolet CK truck is what I consider the first modern pickup truck. It represented the first shift into making trucks livable things you could comfortably drive every day, rather than just a tool and a tool alone. This is a 1992 Chevrolet K1500 Silverado. <laughs> Okay, some quick housekeeping. Sorry for the month break from Wookie Drives episodes. I've had some car issues between the Focus being broke again and the mail van that you haven't seen that replaced the Saturn having a catastrophic transmission failure, all within a couple of weeks of each other. On top of that, my wife Tori and I went on vacation for a week to Gatlinburg, so I've kind of just put this little side project of mine to the side for a few weeks while everything kind of worked itself out. But no fear. I should be back to my regularly scheduled bi-weekly episodes of Wookie Drives. Now, let's get to this video. I honestly did not have plans on making a video on a GMT 400 Chevy truck so quickly after the GMT 800 one, but things kind of worked themselves out that way. I do these videos as cars and trucks happen to become available to me, and it happens that an old college friend of mine recently purchased his dream truck a few weeks before this video was made. It also works out that this video is sort of a redo. I've mentioned it in recent videos, but I've been wanting to redo a lot of my early videos, especially the first 20 or so, as I don't feel like they're representative of where I'm at now as a creator. Way back in 2018, I filmed a 1995 C1500, my fifth video on this channel. The second half kind of goes on a tangent that it was a proper simple truck that's not trying to pretend to be anything else, and honestly, I don't think I had the right and chops to back that rant up. So what better way than to circle back to the GMT 400 generation of GM trucks than with possibly one of the cleanest GMT 400s on the road today? Much like that Silverado from a couple of episodes ago, this is a pure old man spec truck and that man preserved one of the cleanest 30-year-old trucks you'll see outside of a full restoration. Before the GMT 800 Silverados and Sierras could run, the GMT 400 trucks walked, replacing the much-loved yet long-lived square-body trucks of the 70s and 80s. The GMT 400 was truly a modern marvel compared to the truck it replaced. Independent front suspension fuel injection over carburation, cleaned up styling, and just an overall more comfortable interior. They don't seem it now, but when these trucks launched in 1988, they felt like they were light years ahead over the square bodies. Sure, off-road guys still bemoan the loss of a solid front axle with the added complexity of the torsion bar front in these trucks. And boomers alike cried a thousand tears of the loss of their trusty quadrajet carburetors. But the future is now, old man. Even the chassis code GMT400 saw a shift away from each GM truck generation having a fancy name internally. Keep in mind the square body was known as the rounded line. Then you had the action line before, task force, etc, etc, etc. Computers were proudly toted as being part of the development cycle. Something that trucks of the early 70s and before couldn't even fathom. Hate it all you want, but trucks today would not exist without the GMT 400 shifting the market the way it did in 1988. Under the hood, things largely carried over from the 1987 square bodies, as throttle body fuel injection had made its debut across the entire engine lineup that year, sending the old quadrajet carburetor into the pasture. Base was the trusty 4.3 liter V6, followed by the 5 liter V8, the 5.7 liter V8, the 7.4 liter big block V8, and the 6.2 liter Detroit diesel V8. A 6.5 liter Detroit turbo diesel was introduced in 1994, and the gas engines were greatly updated for the upcoming OBD2 changes. Most notably, the throttle body injection was getting replaced for a sequential setup, and the engine line being rebranded as the Vortec line for the first time. Engines were hooked to a couple of different GM 4-speed automatics or a new Venture 5-speed manual, and 4-wheel drive was available as normal. 
You had three trims initially, Cheyenne, Scottsdale, and Silverado. Yes, Silverado was just the top of the line trim package on these trucks, not the full model name. It wasn't until the GMT 800 when Chevy would officially drop the CK designation and give this truck a true model name, following in the footsteps of its GMC sibling, which had all of its GMT 400 trucks branded as Sierras, and Dodge, which had made Ram its truck model over the previous WD designations with its big rig inspired second gen trucks in 1994. Outside of those three initial trims, there were four separate special models you could get with a GMT 400. The Z71 off-road package available on 4x4 1500 starting in 1989, and that gave you special alloy wheels, skid plates, and Bilstein shocks. The WT in 1990 was a bare-bones worker-inspired truck, available in only long-bed fleet-side 1500s with the 4.3, and lacking many interior options because, well, it was meant for contractors through and through. Then there was the Sport, which was sort of a fun-looking appearance package that gave you body color matching bumpers, blacked-out grill and fender flares, and various other fun stuff that made these trucks stand out from the rest of the CK lineup. Finally, there was the Muscle Truck, a favorite of the 1990s, the 454SS. Pretty much it took a Sport appearance package short box 1500, and slapped the big block 7.4 from the heavy-duty trucks under the hood. These were sort of the pinnacle of the GMT 400s, as they were only available for four short model years from 1990 to 1993. And they even beefed up the suspension and provided a faster rate of steering box to improve road dynamics. Definitely the Radwood darling of the GMT 400 for the absurdity. But in hindsight, they're fairly tame compared to later muscle trucks such as the 2nd Gen Ford F-150 SVT Lightning or the Ram SRT-10. But it was still fun within their own time period. For the most part, you only had two cab configurations, either the regular cab or the extended cab. But starting in 1992, you could get the crew cab model in dualies. The GMT 400 would live on until 1999, when it would start to get phased out for the GMT 800 trucks, before the final C3500 HD was released in 2002. That's a 14 year time span for these trucks. Not quite the 18 years that the square bodies had. Alrighty, this particular GMT 400 is a 1992 Chevrolet K1500 Silverado, and boy oh boy, it's a minty one. If you thought the 2000 Silverado from episode 116 with its 135,000 miles was mint, oh, <laughs> this 30 year old truck with 47,000 miles has something to say. This wasn't some online buy, it was something the owner Keith found local in Mooresville, North Carolina. This truck was purchased at Randy Marion's in 1992, and it's lived its entire life here in Iredell County. It was a one-owner truck until last year, when it was acquired by the gentleman Keith got it from, who admits that was only really there to flip it. But that original owner cherished this truck. This thing lived in a garage its entire life, only really doing small trips around town despite being optioned to the nines. There's the original window sticker with all the warnings and warranty information, even the standard features and options cassette tape, all in wonderful condition too. The interior is impressively clean and mint, every button and knob looking like how it left the factory. Everything works as intended, even the funky headlight switch from these early 90s GM trucks and vanes that like to become detached and sort of float within their housing, it works as intended. Under the hood, there's nary a speck of dirt or grime, unless you look real closely in the crevices like over by the frame rails. Even the steering column still has the original plastic shroud, which is something that loves to fall apart over time. The bed is scratched up, yes he did use it as a truck, so it's hauled stuff before. But the original owner kept this truck in beautiful condition for nearly 30 years, and honestly, I told Keith that he has something he can probably take to Lake Norman Cars and Coffee with how impressively clean this truck is with its age. 
The original 5.7 had been replaced with the GM crate engine at some point, don't really know the story behind it, but other than that, this truck is in all its 1992 glory. The wonderful early GMT 400 two-tone paint with the pinstripes. That blue interior, just everything about this truck is perfect. On the road, it... It drives like a truck. Don't get me wrong, the suspension actually does a pretty good job of not beating you up, despite this being a truck sitting on a traditional ladder frame and solid rear axle with leaf springs, but... Not that bad. That torsion bar suspension actually does a pretty good job. But man, it still drives like an old truck. You can't deny that this has an old school steering box and it's got plenty of wander to make your granddad proud. I can definitely see the lineage of how Chevy trucks evolved now have driven this, a square body and the GMT 800 for the channel. The suspension feel is going in the right direction, but the steering is still needing some help as it feels like how trucks had always been to that point. And I'd argue that the GMT 400 feels a little better put together on the inside over the GMT 800. Yeah, they do have hard plastics and buttons that fail over time like the GMT 800, but it just feels less rattly compared to GMT 800s. I don't know, maybe it's just my rose-colored glasses sitting in this mint 92 Chevy truck. It just feels right. It feels like I'm in my grandpa's maroon WT again as we put along to IGA for some groceries. Sure, grandma's cooking leaves a lot to be desired, but she has cable and that means I can watch Nickelodeon while I eat and settle down for the night. My brother and I watching the wild thornberries and rugrats. Tomorrow, grandpa's got a couple Arctic Cat lynxes that he wants us to test out. But we can't let grandma know because she definitely would never let us hang out at this shop again. <laughs> Heck, to this day, I think she still <laughs> insists that me and my brother were playing chicken with those snowmobiles. We weren't. We were just having a race. Oh, the nostalgia I feel sitting in this old truck. And I'm glad Keith got to achieve finding his dream truck. He paid 14000 for it. But honestly, that feels almost low for a truck like this. In his shop and around, he was finding that most GMT 400s of this vintage had around 150,000 miles minimum. They were two-wheel drive because it's the South, and overall just used and abused compared to what he found this one for. He almost talked himself out of it, but he finally told himself he'd probably find another truck like this for this price. He was right. A truck like this that's this clean and, and as low as miles can easily fetch 25000 on Bring a Trailer or Cars and Bids, as guys with more money hope to achieve their childhood nostalgia. 14000 might seem like a lot of money for an old truck, but it was a steal in the grand scheme of things, especially as ones in good condition as this one are becoming harder and harder to find outside of private collections. The GMT 400 was the natural step in pickup truck evolution. It replaced the beloved but 15-year-old 70s design with something that seemed almost 21st century in the 1980s. It proved trucks can be comfortable, something you could live with. 30 years later, as almost everyone is daily in a truck of some sort, they can all thank the GMT 400 for laying the path for their Silverado or F-Series or Ram being as comfortable as they are to live with. And that's why I consider these trucks to be the first truly modern pickup trucks. We may have lost the plot a little along the way with how large and gouty our trucks have become, but the GMT 400 still had that simple pickup truck charm. You can thank the second gen RAM for setting the wheels in motion for trucks to become more stylized status symbols. But the 1992 Chevrolet K1500 Silverado at least feels modern without being over the top. I think that's a good thought to end on. Have a good day everyone. See you next time. Thank you once again for watching another episode of Wookie Drives. Huge shout out to my buddy Keith of Mooresville, North Carolina for letting me drive his recently purchased old truck for this show. If you have a car or truck you'd like to see and happen to be in the Mooresville or Statesville, North Carolina area, email me by submitting your car to wikidrives at gmail.com. That's right, submit your car to wikidrives at gmail.com. That's wikidrives at gmail.com. Don't forget to give the video a like, drop a comment with some feedback. Any sort of interaction with this video really helps small channels like mine grow in the algorithm. Share with all your GMT 400 truck friends. 
And finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for more Wicked Drives like these. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. It's Monday morning in Ford County. That full-size Chevy pickup sure has a more advanced design than Ford. Now that you mention it, the lines do remind me of modern neoclassic sculpture. I see a lot of Bauhaus influence. The understated simplicity even contributes to greater fuel efficiency. Form follows function. High fuel efficiency. No wonder people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet.